Well, hey everybody, your good buddy 650 Eve here, and I'm super excited because I'm at Sills Motor Sales, and today, Zach the Master Mechanic is going to execute the first service on my 2023 BMW M1000 RR, and he's going to remove the pesky 8,000 RPM rev limit from the machine. On top of that, he's going to install the Bren Tuning ECU flash, which is going to completely unlock our menacing, beautiful competition edition M1000 RR and make this machine a bad boy. Yeah, so uh, I've got the bike inside. Let's go inside and see what Zach the Master Mechanic is doing to it. Zach, you got the new M bike up on the stand. Yeah, backwards. something different up on the uh, stand today. We got the M bike. Yeah, I got to put it on backwards because of these, uh, the aero package that covers the rotor yes. is, goes down below and would hit my vice. So yeah. maybe one day we'll get your other M bike together and then we can put it on this bench and just put it on a rear stand. Yeah. But for now, it's on the bench backwards which actually comes in handy for doing lots of stuff. I do forks this way and front tires. And okay. So I've gotten pretty good at putting bikes on the bench backwards. It's kind of weird the first time though, for sure. Yeah. So we got this up because we're going to knock out the first service, which I don't believe is much, but I'll have to bring up the checklist and make sure we get everything done. Definitely going to remove the rev limiter. Nice. And uh, how many miles you wind up getting on it? Over 600. Oh, nice. What do you yeah. think? Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's Hard nice, <laughs> yeah, because it's so limited, yeah. and it still has that flat spot, man. That's annoying flat spot. Yeah, so. six twenty nine. Yeah, so definitely yeah. got some miles on it. Yes. What do you think, uh, comfort wise? Though you feel, start to feel more comfortable on Absolutely. it, and start handling. Yeah, I love the way it turns like and same. stuff. Yeah, yeah. I love it at stock height. I'm not going to lower it, guys. Don't you worry about that. But yeah, no recalls, so that's good. Oh yeah. And here comes our running in check checklist. Okay. No okay. steering head bearing, no nothing weird. Just check the brake fluid levels, check the clutch free play, that kind of stuff. Okay. Change the oil and uh, delete the running in rev, rev limit. All right, so this screen shows all the computers that talk to each other. Uh, the combi, which is your instrument cluster. This is the engine control unit. That is an alarm system, ABS, and general module is what takes care of like uh, turn signals and fuel level and just little comfort things on the bike. So we got a fault code. Let's see what it's for. Oh, oh, this was back from uh, when it was stalling the mixture, mixture preparation. It's not present. Let's see how many times it was an issue. Just put a fault code. So we can go to details. So 63. That's not bad actually, because it before I think the first time it had 305 okay. in like 10 miles. So. Wow. It, I think it corrected itself shortly after we reset the adaptation values. Okay. But that is odd that it came back at all. But we'll delete it. See if it comes back. You no know more stalling though, right? No, no stalling. Seemed to run Runs, pretty fine. smooth. Yeah. Deleted, so it didn't stick around. That just means it's a temporary fault anyway, not permanent. So that's good. Get to the good stuff. Activate, deactivate. gone nice no more rev click of a button all right we'll just do our couple other cursory checks while we still got the bike down low before we raise it up to change the oil clutch free play you need to have some always this shouldn't be tight uh brake lever feels good we have brake fluid throttle isn't sticking or anything uh what else can we see oh we'll check uh check the function of everything make okay. sure we got lights yep bright lights yep Yep. Oh yeah, yeah, it did not. Kind of the same checks we do when it comes out of the crate. And that should be warm enough to change the oil. Okay. I like to just go around with the flashlight, make sure nothing's leaking, nothing looks out of place, and everything looks good. Those look like titanium headers. They are. Wow. This whole exhaust is titanium. 
Oh wow. I think we weighed it last time. It was uh it was lighter than a yeah. stock system and it definitely looks way nicer. Yes. Like look how nice all the welds are. Absolutely. That drain and this actually has a small oil filter on it. At the first service, it could switch to a larger one. I have no idea why it comes from the factory with the smaller one. Yeah, it makes like zero sense, but you can see it's not much larger, but it is a little bit larger. Okay, a little bit of a tighter fit. I see. A lot of times when we switch to aftermarket exhaust, it gets to be too tight of a fit and you just pull this oil line. I think we've shown that before. On yeah. One of the build bikes. Turn plug back in there. There is a torque spec for the oil filter and drain plug, but at this point I've just done it so long. I like my feel of tightness better than using a torque wrench. If you don't know what that would feel like, definitely go with the torque spec. Yeah. Because that'll help you get that feel for it. But it's just torque wrenches when, with that crush washer on there gives it a really weird reading. And same with this rubber gasket. I feel like it, it's easy to over tighten. Yeah. You want to be real careful if you're attempting this yourself. Put a little paint mark on there so that I know everything's tight and doesn't spin at all because we can see if it moved. That way, if like you wind up with an oil drip or something, I can just be like, hey, Eve, look, is that two, are the two yellow lines still touching? And you could be like, yes or no. Yeah. Well, let me know. I mean, we have video evidence it's tight now, but every job you don't. Where the hell is all the oil going? I don't know. <laughs> to where it needs to go. <laughs> to the engine. <laughs> All right, got the chain all cleaned up. We double checked your tire pressure and that's pretty much it for the first service. Okay. We're gonna take it out for a quick ride and then uh, we'll bring it back and put a Brent tune on it. Nice. All right, so I got the file downloaded onto my giant handheld okay. and we got your 650E tuning file, the date that he was created and nice. all new. So let's see what kind of secret sauce we got here. Oh, there we go. No turning back now. Nope. Not that we want it to. We want that flat spot removed in second gear. And, and that cold start gone. Yeah, and maximum power too. Maximum power in all gears. Maybe it'll kick open the uh, intake flapper door too, so yeah. it'll sound cool all the time. So now that Zach the Master Mechanic has done the first service and the Ben Tuning ECU flash on my beautiful 2023 M1000RR Competition Edition. This will be my first ride with this machine unlocked and I'm super excited about it. If you saw my previous video riding the stock M1000 and the stock V4R, I love the fact that the V4R does not have a limit on it whatsoever. Although I didn't abuse that bike, it is nice being able to go over 8,000 RPM on a motorcycle. So let's experience that on this beautiful machine. It actually sounds different too, as Zach mentioned earlier. Now that the uh, <laughs> air intake is open all the time with the brim tuning. And it doesn't have a crazy startup, rough idling situation either like it did stock. Zach also said the flat spot in second gear is gone. I'm going to test that because that too was very, very annoying. But the looks of this bike, obviously not annoying. It's absolutely gorgeous. And now it's time for me to see how it rides. Well, first gear feels nice. Silky smooth. Let's see how second gear is. No more 
Platz machen, das für schon. <lacht> And it's really, really fast now. Wow. That pesky rev limit is no more. We set the rev limit, uh, we set the shift light to 14.5. This thing revs all the way up to 16. Oh, and I have low fuel. We'll take care of that momentarily. But I will say, this thing just scoots now with the wind tuning. Really moves out. Super nice, awesome acceleration, magnificent quick shift and auto blip of course. I'm impressed with the Bintuni ECU flash and how this bike performs now that it no longer has an 8,000 RPM rev limit. Wow. It is now at this point, it's right up there with my stock Pinagane V4R. Now, keep in mind, this bike is still stock, minus the Brent tuning, still has the stock exhaust on it, but it moves out. It's, it's really impressive now. And now the restrictions have been uh, eliminated from this machine. I usually don't like doing what I call the rainbow roll, which is <laughs> shifting side to side on the bike, but I just can't get over how maneuverable and how light this motorcycle feels. Um, it could be a mixture of things. I mean, it is still stock height, which I love, but the bike just turns in effortlessly. And now that it's been print tuned, uh, the power is really just, whoa, right there. You know, and that's, that's really a benefit of this motorcycle having the shift cam technology that is on the 2020 and newer s 1000 rs That gives these machines low and mid-range torque, which was absent previously. I mean, the bikes used to be known as just being top-in monsters, but now it has power all over the board. You can see here in fifth gear, my favorite gear for cruising the highway, this thing just moves out on demand. You could be cruising at, I don't know, observing the speed limit at 70 miles an hour or so, and then you just hit it and boom, it just climbs. Next thing you know, you're in the triple digits, God forbid, but, and the rear sets, the new M competition rear sets on this bike, guys, are totally fantastic. Super comfortable on your foot, beautiful to look at, adjustable in many ways. We usually replace the rear sets on our bikes with you know, Litex or Alpha Racing or something of that sort from Motor Million, but in this case, there is no need to do that on the M1000 competition. And I've mentioned before in my previous videos about this bike to look down at all of this carbon fiber, finished gloss carbon fiber up top, raw carbon fiber on the back there, and the headlights illuminate against that. Guys, that is pretty, pretty, pretty nice to glance down there when you're riding this fantastic machine. Zach the Master Mechanic did try to install Rizoma Stealth mirrors onto the bike today, but was not able to do that because the new 2023 M1000 Competition Edition, the holes for the stock mirrors are huge. And if you were to put the Rizomas on there, there would be a huge gap that we did not want to look at. So hopefully Rizoma will do something about that, make some sort of cap or restyle their stock mirrors for this bike. But for now, using the stock mirrors isn't bad at all. Um, they do have the turn signals integrated into them. I like that. And this is not going to be my main SmackDown bike, so I don't really, you know, it's not bothering me that I have stock mirrors on the machine. But yeah, guys, stay tuned for lots more videos on the beautiful m 1000 rr We have a dyno comparison coming up between it and the Pinagalli V4R 2023 model. 
using both the Ducati oil that's in the V4R and Motul 300V to see if there's a difference between the oils in that particular bike. And then we'll put these bikes up against each other to see what type of power they make. We can already assume that the Pinagale makes more power than the M1000, but that remains to be seen. One more quick note, guys, that Zach did mention today during the um, first service and all that, that this bike is not consuming oil at an alarming rate like the previous M1000 did. He says that issue appears to have been resolved. There was a bulletin sent out to BMW Master Techs that said that the uh, issue was resolved, but Zach wanted to wait and test it for himself to confirm, and he did just that. So if you buy this new bike, you will not have the excessive oil consumption issue that the 2021 and 2022 models had. All right, folks. Let's, uh, let's hook up with some of my good buddies down here in the Cleveland area. As cars pretend, pretend like I'm invisible. And uh, keep watching, guys. Stay tuned for more videos. As always, thanks for viewing. We'll catch you next time on the 650E YouTube channel.